Okay, so let's continue <coughs> our discussion about the du primal dual pairs. Suppose there are some constraints that are not less than or equal to. So suppose here we have a greater than or equal to constraint and an equality constraint. We want to still find an upper bound of Z star. So now, if we want that after the linear combination with coefficients y1 and y2, we still want the left-hand side can be bounded by the combination of the right-hand side. Suppose we want this, we want less than or equal to, then the answer is simple. For y1, it must be non-positive, so that we may reverse the direction of this greater than or equal to inequality. For y2, it can be of any sign, because this equality will never violate this less than or equal to requirement. Okay, so now the primal dual pair are here. For this greater than or equal to constraint, y1 must be less than or equal to. For this equality constraint, y2 must be unrestricted in sign. Okay, and this gives us some more observations or actually rules. For primal less than or equal to constraints, the dual variable must be non-negative. For primal greater than or equal to constraints, the dual variable must be non-positive. And for the primal equality constraints, the dual variable must be free. So in general, if we have a primal program like this, okay, we have all kinds of constraints and all kinds of variables, then the dual variable well, again, can be formulated according to the primal problem. For greater than or equal to constraints, you have less than or equal to, uh, sorry, you have non-positive variables, and so on, and so on. For non-negative variables, you have greater than or equal to constraints, and so on, and so on. Okay? One thing that you need to uh, keep in mind is that the dual program is constructed from the primal program, okay? And why do we want that pro uh, dual program? Is because we want to find an upper bound of the primal objective value, okay? And through that principle, we construct the dual program. And it should be convincing that if we want this principle to hold then the dual, the dual program is determined uniquely, right? For every primal component, you have a corresponding dual component, and it cannot be something else. It must be that thing defined in this rule. Okay, so regarding numbers, primal coefficients, a uh, primal um, objective coefficients gets to the dual right-hand side. Primal right-hand sides gets to the dual objective coefficient. Primal constraint coefficients are still the dual coefficient uh, for constraints, but now the matrix are somewhat transposed. Okay, this is a one two, and a one two goes to here. This is a two three, and a two three goes to here, and that's not very surprising. Every dual constraint is doing a comparison for one primal variable. And that's why the dual constraint consists of A11, A21, and A31. Okay, keep in mind, the coefficient matrix must be transposed. So we also need to use matrix to represent um, primal dual pairs because that will allow us to do derivations for our dual theorems. In general, Suppose the primal program is in this standard form, okay, equality constraints with non-negative variables. We know, according to our rule, dual LP must be in this way. First, equality constraints requires that those dual variables to be free. And then, greater than, uh, I mean, non-negative variables requires that in the dual problem, all these constraints are greater than or equal to, okay? You may want to verify this rule by yourself. So, for every primal program, we have this dual linear program, and we want to express them in matrices. So, this is a primal program. 
For dual program, we typically write in this way: y is the decision variable, and by convention, we like to write it as y transpose b instead of b transpose y, and we would write y transpose a greater than or equal to c transpose. The reason for transposing the decision variable y in the dual program is that we want to keep a unchanged, b unchanged, and the c unchanged. Okay, we want to make them somewhat consistent in the primal and the dual pairs. With this matrix representation, later we will use them to derive some theory to link primal and dual pairs. So now let's discuss how may we find a dual program for minimization problems. For minimization problems, the dual LP is used to to maximize the lower bound. Okay. For minimization problem, we look for lower bound and we solve a linear program to maximize that lower bound. The rules for the directions of variables and constraints are needed to be reversed. Why? Because now we need lower bounds. Previously, when we need upper bounds, we need to maintain less than or equal to and less than or equal to all the ways. Now, to find lower bounds, we need to maintain greater than or equal to and greater than or equal to all the ways. Anyway, you may want to derive the rule by yourself. Here, I just want to list the result, and because the process can be completed by yourself, for a minimization primal. The dual must be a maximization problem. Okay, all the other rules somewhat are identical to the maximization situation. It's just that now, for primal constraints, you get dual variables, and the sign are determined in the opposite way when you have maximization primal. For dual, uh, for primal variables. You get dual constraints, and the rule is also reversed. Let's just、uh, do the comparison here. The primal objective value three x one plus four x two plus eight x three. Now we need it to be greater than or equal to the left hand side after comparison after combination. Okay, so it's this one. We need this, and for this to be true, because x one is non-negative. Now we need three to be greater than or equal to y one plus two y two, which is exactly this one, okay, and the other two similar. And now, from here to here, we just uh um do some arrangements, and afterwards from here to here, okay, we need x one plus two x two plus three x one to be greater than or equal to six, okay, exactly this one. So we need to maintain. This inequality, so your y one must be non-negative. But for y two, we need two x one plus x two plus two x three to be greater than or equal to four. Okay, the reverse of this one. So that's why y two must be non-negative. So now we can solve primal problems. We can solve、uh, we can handle maximization primal. We can handle minimization primal. And it turns out that we may combine the general rules for them into the simple table here. <clears throat> Suppose you have a primal maximization problem. You read the rule from left to right. So if you have a constraint that is less than or equal to, your dual minimization problem, the variable should be non-negative. If the constraint is greater than or equal to. Your minimization problem should have less than or equal to variables, or equality gives you free variables. From if your if your primal problem is a minimization problem, on the other hand, then you read the rule from right to the left. Okay. If, for example, if your minimization problem has a free variable, then in the maximization problem, that constraint should be equality. So. With this rule, you will be able to、uh, construct any dual program from any primal program. Okay, it's just that you need to make sure that for maximization primal, do it from left to right. For dual primal and、uh, for dual problem that is a minimization problem, do it from right to the left. Here, uh, 
I hope that I have um it's convincing enough to show you the uniqueness and the symmetry of duality. Given any primal program, there is a unique dual program whose dual is also the primal. So that may say that uh, in this way, the first part is that given any primal, the dual defined in this rule is unique. Okay, I hope that's uh, convincing to you because that's somewhat intuitive. And then another thing may be less trivial is that the dual of the dual is the primal. Okay, I give you a program. If you get to the dual and then get the dual of the dual, the dual of the dual will be the primal. It's not very hard to show that as long as you give you some example and then do the, uh, try the rules by yourself. Then you will see uniqueness and symmetry are both true. So here I just list some examples. I have one example with a minimization primal, and you get maximization dual according to a rule. For another example, is from max to the mean. Now you know this is a if and only if statement, or this is a one to one mapping. Okay, primal goes to a dual, and then the dual of the dual is the primal. Okay, try to verify this by yourself. Try to get some more examples from primal, get to the dual, and then get back to the primal to make sure that you know you really know how to link. Primal and the dual programs. In the next video, we're going to discuss more about the properties between primal and dual pairs. Thank you.